Hi there, Carl Messi here, author of the Guidebook to Happiness and creator of the 30-Day Happiness Challenge, and welcome to this mini happiness class presentation. I'm going to show you six ways to increase your productivity, and who wouldn't like a little bit more productivity in their life, because it means we get higher results, more success. So let me show you these six ways. And there's a picture of multitasking. We've got a guide there. Now imagine the girls that are looking at this presentation are, are chuckling to themselves already and they're thinking, of course, this is unrealistic picture because it's a guy and we all know that guys can't multitask. Well, you'd be surprised to learn. The research suggests that regardless of whether it's a male or female, we are all not so great at multitasking, certainly not as good as we think we are. Because what the brain does, the brain loves working on single point of focus. When it's single points of focus on a specific task, it can actually work through it. You see, our brain, and particularly the neocortex, the most evolved part of the brain, sort of the upper brain, can only do so many things at once, can only focus effectively on so many things at once. So when we start multitasking, we actually reduce the effectiveness of any of those tasks we're doing and the probability of making mistakes goes up. So some of the most successful people on the planet are all about being laser focused on the specific thing they're working on at the time and they don't have distractions in and that's why they perform at such a high level. So if you want better results in the things you want in your life it's about focusing your attention specifically on the things that need doing at that specific time finish that task then go on to the next one so this idea about being effective in multitasking and people saying i'm a good multitasker you might want to try what it is like how effective you are when you focus on specific things at once Okay, so who am I? Um, Carl Massey, former life Australian Army major, Olympic Games consultant for about five years, so a strong strategic background, and I've put that together with about 13 or 14 years now of study and research into peak performance, personal growth, the science and art of happiness, uh, positive psychology, social psychology, all of those things, and working in my own practice as an NLP master practitioner, life coach, personal trainer, and hypnotherapist. So I'm sort of coming at this from different angles. So I have that structural perspective with productivity from the army side of things and from the strategic planning side of things with the games, but I'm going to sort of weave in what I've learned about the mind through working with clients and the studies that I've done along the way. So Get ready for the ride. So the first thing is, when we want to be more productive, what we need to do is identify what the most important tasks are. And to understand what the most important tasks are, we probably need to understand what our bigger goals are. When we know our bigger goals, then we can identify what the most important tasks are to achieve those particular things we want. So if we want to get productive... And this can be on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, yearly basis. It's about identifying what is most important. Now, let's look at this from the perspective of a day. If I want to be more productive in my day, I want to, at the start of the day, and I generally do a morning routine where it sort of wakes me up. I do some exercise. I do some meditation. I drink a, a green drink. So I'm buzzing. And then I sit down and I look at, okay, the projects I'm working on, what are the most important tasks? And I'll write those down. And it might be 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 tasks. You probably don't want to get up to 20 if you're looking at what you can do in the day. If you're looking at what you can do in the day, you probably want to sit around about five tasks. The next thing, you're looking at those most priority, those most important tasks, and then you're prioritizing them. Not everything is of equal value. You want to look for what has the biggest return on investment. What with you doing something is going to create the greatest level of result and take you even closer to your ultimate goal. So it's about you know using this, firing up this brain of yours, firing up this neocortex, this prefrontal lobe, really thinking about what is the most important. And this is one of the, the keys to productivity and the keys to getting incredible results. It's being clear about those most important tasks, but then prioritizing them. So you always work on the most important stuff. And that takes us to the next one. You want to work on the number one most important task first. And a lot of times that can be the biggest challenge. So a lot of times we look at that and we go, no, nah, nah, I'll do these other things first. 
I strongly encourage you to tackle the big stuff first, particularly at the start of the day when you're most fresh. You've had a night's sleep, you've had some breakfast, maybe you've, uh, you've had a coffee and you're like buzzing, ready to go. Work on the most important stuff first. So most important task first. The only, 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 only exception I'd make to this is if you are completely stuck, then maybe you need a task to break that inertia. Maybe then you do a, a smaller task, something that gets you moving, something that gives you a small win. But then as soon as possible, come back to this number one. This is your primary focus. This is where productivity soars. This is where you outperform others. When you focus on doing the most important stuff first. Okay, I couldn't talk about productivity if I wasn't talking about email. And give me some tips about how to work with email because emails and emailing can be time consuming. And as far as productivity goes, it can be a huge hamper. Hamper, it doesn't really fit in. It can be a huge impediment to you actually getting the success that you want. Maybe I'm talking about hampers from Christmas time, still caught up in Christmas. And I can't believe I'm recording this towards the end of January and January 2014 has absolutely flown. Anyway, back to productivity. The first tip is, this is how you go through your emails. When you open your emails up, first thing you want to look at and ask yourself the question, do I need to delete it? Not, you know, what do I need to respond? Look at it, do I need to delete this? Is this taking me closer to the things that I've deemed the most important in my life? Yes, no. If it's a no, it's gone. Delete it. And what you'll find is particularly these days with the amount of emails we get, you can probably delete half of your emails and it not adversely affect your life at all. The next one you want to look at, can I delegate it? Now, this is a challenge if you're working for yourself, pretty hard to delegate it. Um, So it depends on your situation. Are you able to delegate that to someone else, push it off to someone else? So that's the next question you ask. Third one is, do I just file this thing? Is there no action required? Is it just something I just put away? Yes, thank you for telling me. I'm just going to put that away and maybe look at it later. So that's the third action. And sometimes that might be, say you subscribe to some newsletters or um, some blogs, that sort of thing. You might get those and you go, yeah, I don't have the time to look at it now. It's not that important for me to look at it now. I'll file it and I'll come and have a look at it later. The very last question you ask is, do I need to respond to this and how do I need to respond to it? So really, once you get to that stage, you you would have culled the majority of your emails. So you're only responding to the stuff which is important for you and important for taking you in the direction that you want to go. Okay, second tip on emails. This is one that I, I teach in workshops with corporations and that sort of thing. And it's about not checking your emails before you start your most important task. The reason is, once you start checking emails, you're actually um, checking on other people's responsibilities or other people's agendas. So most emails that come to you are someone asking something of you. And it may be completely off the path. You want to work on what's most important for you as you've deemed from, from looking at your projects, as you've deemed as the most important thing for you, that's what you want to work on. And you want to work on that fast, or oh, fast, fast. You want to work on that first before you get distracted with emails. Okay, third tip. This is about block time. And again, it's about how the mind works. The mind, single point of focus, if it's doing one task, it gets better and better at the same task the more it does it. So the more we do emails, as in responding to emails, the better and quicker we get at actually responding to them. So when we start emailing, it might take five minutes for a response. If we keep just, you know, responding, 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 working our way through our emails, by the time we get into the last emails, our response time might be three minutes, it might be two minutes. We get more efficient at it the more we do it. So what we want to do is we want to block out time specifically working and checking emails. Now, I don't check my emails until midday. And then I check them through the afternoon, mid-afternoon, late afternoon. So I actually block out time and I specifically work on emailing at that time because I know it's more efficient and I know I'm less distracted. I don't want to be switching back and forth between tasks because I know that that is not most effective for my brain. If I'm working on emails go off, do something else, come back to emails, I'm back to that taking five minutes. Whereas if I just stick on emails, 
I'm winding down the time it takes for me to respond. So this is obviously, obviously if you're working in an organisation, you need to work that out with people. You need to let people know that you don't check emails to a certain time. And therefore, if they need to get something urgently to you, they either give you a call or they knock on your door. Old school style. So definitely a big thing for productivity. The next one is reducing distractions. And I work with a lot of clients in my coaching practice that are concerned about procrastination and and often spend hours and hours wasting their time on things that are unimportant. So one of the first things I do with them is work out their goals. Firstly, what's their purpose in life? And, you know, this may take a little bit of um, pulling and prodding to work out what the bigger purpose is. Then we work out what long-term goals, medium-term goals and short-term goals. And generally like that triangle represents, there's more short-term goals, less medium-term goals and less long-term goals. Maybe there's only a couple of long-term goals and your purpose is generally a singular thing. Might be a couple of components to it, but you have a singular purpose. And so what comes up is, you know, opportunities come up. If an opportunity is outside of those things that you've deemed important to get you closer to your short, medium, long term and purpose, then you say no. If an opportunity comes up and it's in alignment with what you're working towards, yes. Opportunity comes up outside of what you've deemed important, it just gets a big no. Maybe you pick it up and you put it on the shelf. And you say, okay, I'm going to revisit that at the end of the year or at the end of the month to see whether there's any value in following up that opportunity. But generally, this is what happens when someone procrastinates a lot. They're very unclear of what their goals are. And whenever an opportunity comes up, they're distracted by it. So they're pulled all over the place. The high achievers are very clear about what they want to do, very clear about their purpose, very clear about their goals, and only say yes to opportunities that fit underneath that umbrella. And here's the last one, the sixth way to improve your productivity. It's called block time, and it ties in with that idea I talked about with the emailing, where if we work on a singular point of focus, a singular task, we actually get better at it. And the one thing with block time too is our productivity is huge when we just focus on this one thing and remove all other distractions. So if you're blocking out time, so you're creating some new products or new product ideas, you want to turn off your email, turn off your phone, close the door, maybe find a separate office, find a meeting room, find a separate room in the house, lock yourself in the closet, whatever it is, but take yourself away so that you have no distraction. When you have no distraction, when you're working in this block time, super productive. You're super productive. This is best for the mind. Any other things I add to that? Make sure you're well hydrated, great for the brain, and maybe nibble on some snacks, some healthy snacks, maybe some, uh, some raw nuts, for example, good brain food. So there's the thing, you know, blocking out time and just specifically working on that one thing, you'll find your productivity is hugely increased. Rather than doing a little bit here and then a little bit later on and then a little bit later on, block out a big chunk and work specifically on that one task all the way through to completion. Okay, so there you go, six ways to increase your productivity. If you've got any questions for me about it, jump over to my Facebook page. It's just Carmassy page. Um, and you can ask questions there. I also put in there podcasts that I make up, newsletter articles. So there's a bunch of information that goes onto that Facebook page. So make sure you check that out. The other one is the signature product that I work with, the coaching program that is most effective for the clients I work with and the coaches within World's Biggest Gym is the 30-Day Happiness Challenge. It's six coaching sessions over the course of an integrative online program, highly effective. It is fundamentals plus tailored to your individual specific needs with that support all the way. So that's a, a really awesome program. If you want to check that out, just go to www30 dayhappinesschallenge.com and check it out. So again, if you've got any questions on the ways to increase your productivity or any feedback or suggestions or you'd like to share this presentation with other people that you think could benefit from it, um, feel free to pass it on. And if you've got any questions, again, just jump onto my Facebook page and you can contact me there. Ask away. So 
I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are. All the best with your productivity moving forward, with the results you get in life, with the success you have in life. Have a fantastic day and take care.